Welcome back. Dance Queen Arlene Phillips is still to come this morning. Now, though, you might have seen this article in Tuesday's Daily Mail. It's by a journalist called Samantha Brick. And the headline reads, Why do women hate me for being beautiful? Well, within hours of the article being published, it had everyone talking. Thousands went onto the newspaper's website to comment, mostly negatively, and she became one of the most talked about topics on Twitter. But most of the response, as I said, was extremely negative. In just a moment, we'll be discussing whether it's possible to ever be too confident. But first, here's the reaction to Samantha's article. In her article, Samantha Brick writes, I've regularly had bottles of bubbly sent to my restaurant table by men I don't know. Other women hate me for no other reason than my lovely looks. Samantha even said she can't wait to get wrinkles to help her blend in. Within hours, the article was being read across the world, and it seemed everyone had an opinion. Dragon's Den star Duncan Bannatyne tweeted, Is this a joke? Kirsty Allsop wrote, With so many news stories, I end up feeling sorry for someone, but with Samantha Brick, I'm struggling. And illusionist Derren Brown wrote, Hilarious! Wish I had such an inflated view of my looks. Although she admits that some of the comments have upset her, Samantha remains unabashed, saying they merely serve to prove her point. Well, joining me now is Rachel Evans, who says, just like Samantha Brick, other women are jealous of her looks, and confidence coach Marissa Peer. Uh, Rachel, to start with, you, you have a great deal of sympathy with Samantha. Why, why is that? Yes, um, I um, support Samantha 100% and I think that if you're a beautiful woman and you experience women hating on you, whether you're in the gym or at the supermarket, um, it, you do have to develop a thick skin for that. Uh, um, but my, my question around the whole uh, of this article and is, there are, two, there are two extremes, aren't there? It's great that women are confident. Too often we're talking about low self-esteem and anxiety disorders and eating disorders and all kinds of body dysmorphia. So it's lovely to have, in one sense, we're talking about women being confident. We're talking about where the line is with overconfidence. Yes. Do you assume when somebody, particularly women, responds negatively to you that it's because of your looks? Or would you ever sit down and think, I wonder if it's something that I'm doing, my behaviour or my attitude is causing this negative response towards me. Yes, um, over the years I've had to stop and think, why are women hating on me? When I'm at the gym, I might be wearing a bikini, they throw me dirty looks or snigger at me. And then I decided one day to try and turn their hatred into something positive, so I set up my own fitness and beauty blog on Twitter. And, ha and has that, how's that gone? It's gone really well. Um, I'm now uh, more friendly with women, so it changed the way I think about them. Right. I've become more approachable, and um, slowly I'm kind of like breaking down the barrier, turning the hatred into something more um, friendly and positive. Can you give us some examples of, you know, the kind of the negative you said in the gym and things like that? Well, I wanted attention maybe from men, if you felt as well. Um, I've had unwanted attention. I do turn heads with men. Um, I get positive response in the workplace from men. Um, I have been hired for my looks in the past for job interviews, for job promotions, um, because I've got a background as a fashion stylist or working as a PA in a medical clinic. But with women at the gym, it's a completely different story. They'll just judge me on site and think, I hate her because of the way she looks. But they don't actually know me as a person. So yes. by changing my approach to them, the haters, I find that I'm actually inspiring women to, um, you know, not be a mirror for their insecurities, but to inspire them to be something that they want to be. Okay. Interesting, isn't it, Marissa? It's Very fascinating. interesting. The backlash against that article has been astounding. I, uh, did it surprise you? It surprised me a little bit, but you see, women don't hate beautiful women. They feel sort of in awe of them. And I think with that article, what they were reacting against is what they perceived as arrogance, mm. because it's actually very good to be confident. I mean, men actually find confidence incredibly sexy, and we do like confident people. But where is that line between confidence and arrogance? Where is that line, do you think? Can you well, define arrogance, arrogance isn't confidence. People who are arrogant are not confident at all. That's just the other extreme. Are they overcompensating? Overcompensating, absolutely. But you see, women loved Marilyn Monroe because she was slightly vulnerable. And the thing is that the basis of all friendships is we choose people who share our vulnerabilities. And so if you come across as beautiful, confident and have everything, you have no vulnerabilities to share with it's anyone. no common ground. No, and so, on. so by nature you live a very isolated life. And so beautiful women don't have it all. They're certainly not always happy. 
But if you are beautiful and you feel that people aren't relating to you, you need to be a little bit vulnerable. And warm. We love people who are warm. So if you're warm and self-effacing and funny, yes. you can get away with being yes. stunning. Absolutely. But if you're stunning and aloof, then you're going to be very, very lonely. And, and it's been also there's been some cruel comments, haven't there, about yeah, that article? Really nice. and you know that she, you know, she's not that beautiful and she's average and who does she think all that sort of thing? Um, because it is subjective. Do you think it is always about the looks, or do you think it's the person who is particularly attractive is behaving in a certain way that is repelling people? I think if you think you're gorgeous and if you think you're sexy, you can actually pull that off because it's an energy that people pick up. So a lot of people are saying she's not beautiful. It doesn't matter. If she thinks she's beautiful, I mean, she lives in France, she lives in Europe. If you think you're beautiful, walk down the street there, you will get approached all the time. Right. So it isn't really necessarily about what you look like. It's about what you feel like inside. And it's about believing that you're enough. I mean, I work with people all the time who have a lot of issues. And it's just making them feel that they are good enough and lovable enough will work. So she clearly feels that she's very, very attractive and gets attention, and she does because she believes that. And there's a lesson there for people who don't think they're pretty enough. If you wake up every day and go, I am good enough, I'm lovable enough, then you'll, somebody you'll feel like, better. Somebody like her, or perhaps Rachel, or people like that, who feel that their looks are kind of getting in the way of their ability to socially interact with other people, what, what, can, what sort of advice can you offer there? Be warm and show your vulnerabilities. Tell people immediately you know, the things that aren't working in your life, that you're lonely or that men don't chat you up or that you get attention that you don't like because then you're letting people relate to you. You must go to a level where people can relate to you and like you and, and you can't be perfect. There's no such thing it's as a perfect. perfect person. But people who try to be perfect are the unhappiest people in the world because they're in a race that has no finishing line. So don't try to be perfect. Be warm, engage with people and just be honest and be yourself. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you, you, Rachel. Still to come between now and 9.25, she's the original dancing queen, a West End legend and much loved former Strictly judge.